Genre, fantasy. Essential questions. How has Earth changed over time? What kinds of changes have occurred slowly over long periods of time? In my own backyard, by Judy Kurgian, illustrated by David R. Wagner. I woke up one morning to the sound of a blue jay squawking outside my bedroom window. Raising the window shade, I wondered how many other jays had lived in my backyard. Then I wondered how many people had stood where I was, looking at this very same place. To my surprise, as I looked across my mother's garden toward the brook, my backyard began to look like a farm. People were cutting hay with old-fashioned scythes, like I had seen in pictures. Next to the brook was a strange old building with a water wheel. The hills were plowed fields for growing hay and corn. What I was seeing out my window was my backyard one hundred years ago. I closed my eyes and shook my head. When I looked again, the farm was gone, and people were using a team of oxen to drag a tree trunk to the building beside the brook. It was an old-fashioned sawmill. Men at the mill were pushing the trunks toward a big saw that cut the wood into boards. Maybe the boards from the sawmill would be used to build houses and barns for the first farmers in the area. Then, all at once, right before my eyes, the sawmill disappeared. A covered wagon and a band of settlers were trying to find their way through the river valley that was my backyard. Their wagon carried food, books, clothes, and iron tools. Their leader was asking a frontiersman about what lay ahead. The settlers were using my backyard as a stopping place as they looked for a place to build a log cabin. As the settlers rose to leave, a mist blew over the brook. When it cleared, I saw a group of Native Americans. In the same spot where our summer barbecue is today, a woman was cooking meat that sizzled over the fire. Newly picked corn, squash, acorns, and berries made me think that this must be a harvest celebration before the first settlers came from Europe. Snow began to fall, as if it were winter. Through the swirling blizzard, I sensed that time was moving backward very quickly, back to a time when great ice sheets moved down from the north and covered the land. When the snow let up, my backyard was covered with blue-white ice, a mile thick at its highest peak. The only sound was of the ice creaking and scraping the rocks and frozen land as the ice moved forward with a mighty weight. Then, in a blink of my eye, the ice was gone. People wearing animal skins were trying to drive away an animal that looked like a big furry elephant. I saw a frightened family crouching near their fire. They were holding tools made of stone. I could see paintings on a flat rock wall of the shelter where they slept. Then the animal and people ran away, and it looked much warmer in my backyard. Tall grasses and giant trees grew in a land of wild beauty a land where no person had ever walked. The animals did not look quite like ones I had seen at the zoo. As they came to the brook to drink, I understood that this valley belonged to these creatures. They looked like camels, giraffes, hippos, monkeys, and other animals that no longer live anywhere near my backyard. I watched as once again the years slipped away. Now the trees looked like palms and ferns, and my backyard was swampy and hot. Huge dinosaurs lived in my backyard, 
eating tropical plants in the morning haze. They looked like an Apatosaurus family. Fantastic birds flew across the sky, which was strangely bright. A baby Stegosaurus grazed right in front of my window. Now strange, huge trees appeared, and the smell of rotting leaves filled the air. I saw animals that looked like lizards and centipedes. Giant dragonflies skimmed over the surface of the water and the muddy land. The trees had green trunks, but I could not see very far between them because the air was thick with mist. The view from my window got blurry as the water in the swamp got deeper and deeper. When the land was all under water, a huge fish with big teeth swam by, chasing two sharks. Around the coral and seaweed, unusual fish wore hard shells. Then the waters began to get shallow. The fish disappeared, and the plants sank down to mostly green and blue algae. Brown-green muddy water reflected the light of the sun in a weird, eerie sky. Round jellyfish pulsed by. Some animals, that looked like upside-down bowls with legs, walked across the muddy bottom past sponges and sea fans. Then I caught a glimpse of a world so strange that I could hardly believe my eyes. There was a beach with hissing sulfur springs and the only life was in the form of strange dome-shaped algae. A volcano belched smoke in the distance. It was hard to believe that this place was my backyard. I jumped as my mother's voice called me. Come to breakfast, dear. Her voice pulled me out of the past and into the present. I tried to think about the day ahead but my mind was still far away on the things I had seen, the people, the animals, and the plants that had lived so long ago. Ever since that day, I've looked for bones and fossils that might have been left in that most amazing place, my own backyard.